And today I'm reading from chapter 30, Missing Dad. Hello and welcome back to Riverwood Cabin. I'm Rosie Boo and I'm reading to you from where lions roar at night. The first book in the Barn Chronicles series. And today I'm reading from chapter 30, Missing Dad. When they got home from hospital, Mum told the boys to get ready for bed and then whispered to Millie, Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Millie nodded and her eyes filled with tears. Every time Dad had to stay away from home for work, Mum let one of the younger children sleep in bed with her. It was a special treat. She got into her pyjamas and climbed into Dad's side of the bed. Mum put two hot drinks on the bedside cabinet and climbed in beside her. Don't you worry about Daddy. He'll be just fine. She put her arm around Millie's shoulders and gave them a squeeze. Do you know it's Dad's very first time staying overnight in hospital? I wonder if he'll be homesick. Millie giggled for a second and then grew serious again. I hope he isn't. She knew she would be really homesick if she had to stay in hospital away from Mum and Dad. Mum looked at her worried expression and gave her another hug. Don't you worry, Millie. If you ever have to stay in hospital, I'll stay with you. But I think Daddy's big enough and brave enough to stay there on his own. They drank their milky hot chocolate drinks and then Mum kissed her goodnight and turned out the light. Millie cuddled up next to her and tried to fall asleep. But every time she closed her eyes, she saw Daddy lying on the ground with a white, white face and red, red blood dripping from his hand. She looked over at Mum. She was lying very still, but her eyes were open. Mum, I can't get to sleep. Mum rolled over and stroked her face. I know, neither can I. She paused for a moment and then said, When I was about your age in New Guinea, my mother had a terrible accident. Dad was away for a week and the other missionary's wife was teaching Mum how to light the tilly lanterns. She put the burning lighter into a bottle of meths by mistake and it exploded into flames. Mum's skirt caught on fire and her legs were badly burnt. There were no doctors or nurses there, but a health worker bandaged up Mum's legs and gave her some pain relief. I remember that night so well. Mum was in a lot of pain and she must have been frightened at being on her own without Dad. She asked Penny and me if we wanted to sleep with her that night, but said we would have to lie very still and not bump her legs. I remember the three of us lying there, trying to get to sleep. I listened to the mosquitoes buzzing around outside the mosquito net, and I watched the geckos crawling on the ceiling. Then Mum suggested we take turns praying for everyone we could think of. She went first, and then Penny, and then me. Round and round we went until our eyes grew heavy and we finally all fell asleep. Why don't we try it? asked Millie. I'll pray first if you like. And she closed her eyes and prayed for Dad that he wouldn't be in pain and that he wouldn't get homesick. Then Mum prayed for the doctors who were going to operate on his hand the next day. And Millie prayed for the nurses who were looking after Dad. But she didn't hear who Mum prayed for next because she fell fast asleep. The sun was streaming in the window when she woke the next morning. She glanced at the clock. Half past eight! She jumped out of bed and ran out to the kitchen. Man, I slept in, she said to Mum who was having her breakfast. Jake grinned at her. 
that's what happens when Dad's not here to say, Good morning, family. Mum smiled at him. I'll say, but we all needed a sleep in after yesterday. What time's Dad's operation? asked Josiah. He rang earlier to say they're planning to take him in at about 10.30. We can go up at lunchtime to see him. Millie looked up at Mum. Was he homesick last night, Mum? No, he had a good sleep, but he did miss us all. He's looking forward to seeing us later. Millie kept looking at the clock every few minutes. By 10 o'clock, Mum decided they would all do something constructive rather than just watch the clock. Girls, I'll teach you how to clean the homeward stove. Joe, you can cut some kindling with Sam and Jake. And don't forget gumboots, all of you. It took a long time to clean the stove. First, Mum used a special long-handled scraper to scrape all the soot from different parts of the stove that Millie didn't even know existed. Then Mum got her to empty the ash pan under the trees. We need to lay paper around the stove so we don't get the polish on the lino, Mum told Kate. And we should all put some gloves on too. It's ghastly stuff to get out of your fingernails. Ellie, put some kerosene on your rag and clean any spills off the top plates while we spread out the paper. Once they'd finished those jobs, Mum shook the bottle of Granny's black stove polish for a good minute and then tipped some into an ice cream container. Now, put some polish on your rag and rub it all over the stove. Millie rubbed the black polish on the acorn and leaf motif. Already the stove looked so much better. She couldn't wait for the polish to dry so she could shine it up. We'll lift the doors off to polish them, said Mum. Makes it a lot easier. But while we wait for the polish to dry, let's clean the fire glass. It was hard work rubbing the polish, but soon the stove began to gleam and sparkle. Millie rubbed the acorn and leaf on the flue until it shone. At last, they put the doors back on and stood back to admire their handiwork. Oh, it looks wonderful, declared Mum as she pushed back the hair from her face. Millie looked at her and laughed. You should see yourself, Mum. Your face is covered with black. Mum wiped her face with her apron and then laughed at her girls. Well, you three go and look in the mirror at your own faces. They all ran off to the bathroom and peals of laughter filled the barn. Once they'd mopped the lino, the whole kitchen seemed to sparkle and shine. The boys brought in armfuls of kindling and filled the large cane basket to the brim. Then they all looked at the clock. Dad will be out of theatre now, said Mum. Let's get ready to go. When they walked into Dad's room, he was lying very still on the bed, his hand high on some pillows. They tiptoed in, but he heard them and opened his eyes. Hello, family, he said in a sleepy voice. Are you okay, Daddy? asked Sam. Dad smiled at them all. Just fine, Sam. Millie breathed a sigh of relief and gave him the peppermint chocolate they'd brought for him. It was his favourite. He told her to open it up and give everyone a piece. The bar was soon all gone. Well, it'll be a while before I do any hard work again, Dad told Mum. The tendons in both fingers were partially severed and had to be stitched. I'm going to have to go in for physiotherapy for quite a while. Never mind. Mum patted his arm. I'm just glad you still have your hand and your fingers. The work can wait. Millie looked at the thick wad of bandages and felt her tummy flip. She wouldn't care if Dad never finished her hen house. She just wanted him home again.